Welcome to the channel's mental health series. I figured I start this series off by diving into the aspects of aging. Just personally, I have older parents. One is no longer here and one is currently 65 as she had me at 34. And I think it's important that people tend more to the elderly and there is a specific psychological practice that is placed for the elderly which I will explain later on in this video. How these videos will typically be set up is there's going to be an introduction, certain definitions, then we're going to talk about a couple of mental health theories and some approaches in some videos and the certain mental health treatment that can help with each topic. I hope you enjoy. This video series is intended to educate, inform, and enlighten those that want to know more about components of mental health theories treatments, and plus a little bit of God sprinkled in. In this video, we'll be talking about the following. Psalms chapter 71 verse 9. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. I personally would like to share that having older parents, one is who no longer with us, it can be a time in which I realize that the aging process in most cases gets to us all, as there is no one linear way of aging. Let me explain some more consistent findings in the field of psychology to help you or your aging loved ones through the process. Let's dive into, first, functional age types. The first is the biological age type, also known as chronological age. It does not take into consideration family, health history, natural or accidental causes, nor aging related diseases or issues. The date of your birth and beyond determines this type. The second is your psychological age. This type highlights how an individual feels, acts and behaves as someone could be young, but display faster attributes of old age and vice versa. Things like lifestyle, health, intellectual capacity, and family gene factors can be put into play here. The third functional age type is social. Now within this age type, there are three subsets. The first is normative age graded. The second is normative history graded. And the third is non-normative. Let's dive into each. Even to your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. So the first subset within this functional age type is the normative age graded. It's pretty much just a definition of where biological and environmental factors align with chronological age, such as puberty or menopause or even age-based social practices. Say, for example, you're starting your first day of kindergarten. You hit that first day of puberty. Whoa, what a time, right? And even getting to the age of retirement. The next is normative history graded. This category is more culturally based by your lifespan that are associated with historical time frames, such as epidemics, wars, and other specific indicators of a certain time frame. And lastly is the non-normative social category in which one doesn't really fit into any of the previous subsets. This type is more realistic to someone's aging development 
as the nature is unpredictable. It's unique to the one's experience. Now that you understand some functional aging types, let's dive into some mental health theories that may help you along the aging journey. And particularly, Erickson's psychological theory with the ego crisis and aging, as well as we'll dive a little bit in the identity process theory. Let's get started. The first definition I would like to highlight is the epigenic principle. This is where each stage of life is unfolded by the previous stage. Hence, this theory explains concepts of a quote-unquote predestined order across the lifespan. In other words, what has happened to you in the past is the result of what you currently may be going through. However, that's not always the case. With Erickson's psychological theory, development is explained that self or ego through the age stages of life that challenges the individual's ego. However, there are only few that are normally associated with older age that will be explained. For example, on this chart, you will see the blue highlighted box with stages six, seven, and eight, which we will dive into more detail about, which are intimacy versus isolation, generativity versus stagnation, and ego integrity versus despair. In this psychological model, intimacy versus isolation is where the aspect of love and close relationships are the center of development. If you were to successfully, quote unquote, go through this stage, then you have a healthy sense of what attachment and intimacy are. And you're able to have lifelong, strong relationships. However, if not so successful, this can be a time where it causes lifelong loneliness. The next is generativity versus stagnation. This stage is having feelings of contributing to society or even feeling a sense of feeling stuck or unproductive. Normally, a lot of people feel at one point or another that they may feel stuck. However, nothing is linear when it comes to aging. However, this specific time frame in which normally people feel this way is towards 40 to 65 years old. Even for example, I'm way younger than this time frame, but I have felt seasons of being unproductive and stagnant, not due to my own volition, but more so just environmental factors that put into play that did cause me to become a little stagnant. However, you can combat that by having healthy coping mechanisms to help you through those stages. And one thing that helped me a lot when it came to this stage was giving back to the community. Doing community service and overall just doing things like this including the videos. I hope it helps the community in some way. The final stage is ego integrity versus despair. This stage is highly concentrated on how someone reflects on the life that they've lived. With integrity, you feel the sense of accomplishment and you feel that you had meaning and satisfaction. However, if you feel on the more despair side, then you may feel often hopelessness or regret. The next approach that I wanted to indicate is the identity process theory, which are the factors of aging includes the processes of assimilation and accommodation. As you see on the diagram here, this explains the flow of the identity process theory. Let's dive into each definition. 
With assimilation, this is how someone interprets new experiences relevant to self and their competency. Usually they feel like they're well-liked and ethical. However, there's a downturn to this. This can lead to a rather distorted reality that will be mentioned later and can cause someone to be more self-centered and stuck in their ways as they grow older. Accommodation is more so the developmental stage from stimulation. This is changing your sense of self and take the time to refine yourself. These individuals become unstuck in their ways and realize their flaws and even come to the understanding that they're not perfect. A formal term of this process is the identity balance, just meaning maintaining self while making changes. First Kings chapter three and verse 14. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. So typically, as one ages, mental health issues may become more prevalent as there are new techniques and treatments that are created to help. This section is an introduction to what's out there. Let's dive in. Jiro Psychology. This applies the knowledge and methods of psychology to understand and helping older individuals and their families to maintain well-being, overcome problems, and achieve maximum potential during later life. Now, the American Psychological Association has guidelines when it comes to this type of psychology to help, again, with the well-being, overcoming problems, and to achieve max potential as an elderly or older adult. Here are some considerations when it comes to this treatment method. Attitude, general knowledge, clinical issues, assessments, service provisions, and education. As people age, some outside looking in may think that cognitive issues or impairments may actually be signs of depression or in general, the category of mood disorders. As most equate the elderly or the process of aging Things like getting irritable and disturbances in mood or even memory loss. Things like dementia, to say a common term. To understand the difference, usually dementia and similar conditions have other aspects such as muscular effects associated, as opposed to mood disorders where there's lesser physical factors and more mental symptoms occur. For example, delirium can even be mistaken as dementia, as delirium is a more serious in mental abilities that results in confused thinking and reduced awareness of surroundings. As this is a delicate balance to know, never diagnose this on yourself. Don't determine this on your own. Seek professional help in order to get it accurate diagnosis. Another category is anxiety disorders. There can be various reasons as to why an elderly person may begin displaying feelings of worry, apprehension, and anxiety. As these disorders are typically known for to coexist with medical issues, the most common ones are generally speaking the generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and various phobia-related disorders. Again, this is prevalent to note. There are guidelines in which professionals use to determine timelines, the quantity of symptoms, and severity of symptoms to determine diagnosis. Do not diagnose yourself or others. I always recommend getting a few options for consistency reasonings. Always get a second opinion when it comes to your physical and mental health well-being. The last category 
usually when it deals with mental health issues within the elderly, specifically for this episode. However, this is also a generalized thing that anybody can get at any time, as aging is not linear. There is a possibility, statistically speaking, that an increase in negative thoughts can increase as you age, or in older adults in particular. These thoughts can be a result of psychotic symptoms that distort realities along with serious difficulties in thinking and behaviors. This can also impact motivation. Just like the schizophrenia subset of these disorders, that's exactly what they are. They cause disorder within someone's life, which means it impacts their mental, daily mental capacities. Some under the schizophrenia type are schizoactive and delusion disorder. As all of these disorders impact the mind, but this subset of disorders heavily impact the brain that can last from a few years to a lifetime and can be chronic. In conclusion, Job chapter 12, verse 12. Wisdom is with aged men and with the length of days understanding. As I kept mentioning in this episode, aging is not linear and should be looked at tenderly. The process of aging can bring many experiences and lessons because overall, aging is beautiful.